In today's video, I'm going to review the Last Chance Archery Vein Master Pro. So for right about $300, you could have the Cadillac of arrow fletching jigs that will do any style of arrow and fletch any arrow in any way that you want. Um, I'm going to go over the ins and outs of this fletching jig, some things that I really like about it, some things that I wish were a little bit different, and ultimately really just give you a close-up look and an honest impression of what I think about this fletching jig. You're watching the Jake Minsky YouTube channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Jake Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery. I'm working to make this channel a great resource for all types of archery. Um, so if you haven't yet, hit that subscription button and the notification bell. That way you're notified when I upload new videos. I'm pumping out a lot of content lately and you don't want to miss out on what I've got coming out. So for 300 bucks, the Vein Master Pro may seem like a ridiculous amount of money to spend uh, for just a fletching jig, but I'm going to show you um, some ins and outs on the jig itself and give my honest opinions on it. And then I'm going to show you actually why it's really not that bad of a price and a lot of value for what it is. I've used it for several years, uh, fletching arrows from uh, compound stuff to recurve stuff, indoor veins, outdoor veins, hunting veins, uh, lots of different stuff. And, uh, you know, I really enjoy it. Um, it's really easy to use and it has a lot of features that are not available anywhere else. Before we get too far into the details of this jig, I will put links in the description below on where you can find this jig. Uh, those are Amazon affiliate links. So when you click on that link and you buy that product or do any Amazon shopping within 24 hours of clicking on that link, I do get a, a kickback from that and get some royalties off of it. That Those people that do that shopping really help this channel out and I can't thank them enough because it allows me to produce free content for everybody else out there. Okay, so here is the Last Chance Archery Vein Master Pro. It comes with your standard gun case, basically, that you can store it in. Um, and it has some really unique features that you're not going to find anywhere else. Um, it's got some very, very cool features. So it's, like I said, it's $300 uh, retail, depending on where you buy it from, of course. But in my opinion, the price itself is a little daunting right i'm gonna be honest with you on that one it's a lot of money um and the reason that i think it's really not a bad value is well number one in my opinion there is nothing else like this out on the market but if you were to compare that jig the last chance archery jig to something like this the bitsenberger um you're gonna see that the price on this is right around $93 retail, give or take, depending on where you get it from, of course, uh, for the base fletching jig, the cl one clamp, one knock receiver, and um, it's all right. It does an okay job. There are some downfalls to this one that this one doesn't have, uh, namely would be the uh, clicks on this, every click. You can adjust how many clicks, of course, so that's how many fletches you have. Um, but it's I have this set up for three clicks, 120 degrees each, so it's a three fletch uh, setup. But what it what happens is the uh, clicks themselves on these receivers are not 120 degrees perfectly around the actual circle. So that means that you won't have three veins evenly spaced around the arrow. There's going to be two that are closer together compared to the rest. So this does not have that issue. You can solve this issue with the uh, Zenith uh, knock receiver, which if you have this jig, you got to get this. This makes everything better. Uh, pin knocks and G knocks inserts. This is CNC machined and all of these divots are perfectly evenly spaced around the arrow. So that fixes that issue. But this is 35 bucks. So again, 90, 35, and this is one clamp, right? This is your right helical clamp. And then you have to get a left helical clamp, and then you have to get a straight clamp. So depending on what you're going to fletch, you're gonna use different helical fletchings. When you add up the jig, the three clamps, and the Zenith knock receiver, you're looking at about $200 right there. And then if you didn't use this knock receiver and you got the corresponding Bitsenberger knock receivers for the right helical, left helical, 
uh, and different offsets to be able to index your your feathers correctly, um, you're looking at $260 plus. So you're almost at the $300 price point as this. So that still doesn't have the options that this has. Now this is made out of a machine Delrin it looks like. It's a piece of plastic essentially. Um, they used to make them out of aluminum if I remember right, but the cost on that was ridiculous. This is the knock receiver itself. Um, the one, one of the negatives about the knock receiver that I didn't like, you can see that I actually uh, cut this angle into it. It used to have this straight section all the way out um, where this angle cut right there on both sides that I have cut at angles like that. Um, they were getting into the way of hitting this here. So I cut those out of the way, as you can see right there with a file or a Dremel or something. So that way I had more clearance for getting the fletchings even closer to the back of the shaft. I had to cut that because when using X10s, you have to slide this in so far that you can see the, uh, the clamp essentially for the veins hits the knock receiver. So I had to clearance that. Um, the knock receiver itself, you can adjust. This is how you adjust the depth of where the veins go on basically. I've marked mine as you can see. But essentially what this does, or what this is, is here's the, the ball and spring detent. And then you can loosen this up and take it off. And you can it perfectly index. Hopefully I don't lose any parts, great. See how there's different notches here? You can index where the cock vein is very easily with this. That's your three fletch one. You can see the three detents. And then I think this is potentially on the production piece now. I don't know. This is something that they sent to me a long time ago. Um, but you can see different degrees of set for right and left of, uh, for recurve and for compound. Um, I've never set that up because I just turn my knocks after I fletch them anyway. That's nice to see that you can adjust it like that. Now I could have just put the fletchings further forward, slid this back so the fletchings were further forward on my shafts. Um, but I really liked the way the arrows performed with the fletchings really far back towards the end of the shaft. Um, and I, I think I, I group better like this. So that's why I clearanced it to get as far back as I possibly could. Another unique feature on this jig is this rotating V-block assembly. And what that is, let me get this out of the way. You can see what that's doing is it's perfectly centering the arrow no matter the arrow di diameter. This is an X10 um, and you can do this with just about any size arrow. Here's a little bit thicker arrow, uh, Maxima RZ from, Re uh, from Carbon Express, and it will do you know up to large aluminum size arrows, or you know 23 plus size arrows. Um, so I really like that. This also has a little elasticy, elasticy thing here with a cap. Essentially, your point sits inside of this, and what it does is this attaches to your point and pulls the arrow in against an knock receiver, which I think is really neat too. Um, you have to use it, otherwise as you touch it, it's gonna wanna work its way out. Now, this is the extra unique part that you're not gonna see anywhere else. Um, what this is, this is the slider that slides in these pins where you put your vein in here in between these two wires essentially, and it sandwiches and holds the vein itself. And then you can adjust your offset. And all you do is use this pin to select your, your helical direction, um, your right and left helical direction. Now you've got from zero degrees of helical to zero all the way to five. So zero, one, two, three, four, five degrees. If you go five degrees of helical, you bump this up against that, you clamp it down. And now this is five degrees of left helical. Right's over here, left is over here. Um, so this is five degrees of left helical. Now, something that I found that I can get away with is if you pull the pin out of the way, you can actually get more helical than what is drilled on this actual jig. And what I shot my um, 
my arrows at during the Olympics was eight degrees of helical. So you can see these things just wrap dramatically around the shaft and you can see just basically how they're fletched on. They'll just grab a ton of arrow and spin these arrows like crazy. So the way that I got eight degrees of helical was taking this bottom edge and putting it flush with the bottom edge of the hole like that. And I found that eight degrees was as much helical as I could possibly get on the arrow without having uh, vein contact issues. Now, why is this unique and different compared to this? This is a, a set amount of spin. And then you have to adjust the offset to get the contact correct. Whereas this, you can adjust the true helical, not just the offset. So you adjust your helical, we'll go, I don't know, three degrees, clamp it. I always pull the pin out because it likes to fall out, get it out of the way. So that's something that I don't like. The pin likes to fall out, um, but it happens. And then you take your arrow, we'll put an arrow in like this, use the stretchy cap and put it on the end of the arrow. And then the next thing you'll see on this wire, so these wires actually hold the fletchings, okay? And I, uh, I damaged my actual tubes, the original tubes, and had to get replacement tubes that kind of keep the uh, glue off of the, the arrow itself. But back here, you'll see that black line. Um, on the stock one, there's a black line and a red line to have different indicators for where your veins will be. And actually, I have this installed on backwards, so I gotta loosen it up, flip it over. Put my pin back in, three degrees clamp it. So you take your fletching and you put it the back edge of the fletching right where that mark is. Now this is an AAE wave vein so it's super super thin uh, very difficult to fletch and then you take it and you put it near the arrow and you'll see that these um, they're not really V blocks they're kind of like half moons they will set against the arrow and center this to essentially change the helical so see how it's rotated one way versus the other way so that's why it's truly infinitely adjustable helical and you want to make sure that the arrow is in the center of the v-blocks like that so you can see that it's centered on the arrow contact itself you could verify by looking from this angle, this direction, and that direction. And now, that vein, no matter what, has 100% full contact on the shaft. There is no option for it to not be fully connected. Whereas with these, if you don't have the exact offset correct, it just won't touch. And you can see that the tip here and the tip here are touching, and there's a gap here in the middle. And that gap is going to mean that you don't have full vein contact and it's going to want to lift off the shaft. So in my opinion, this one, um, my fletching times sped up a lot using this jig compared to the Bitsenberger. Um, veins dried faster because the contact was better. There was less uh, glue film between the vein and the arrow itself. So it bonded quicker and it bonded stronger. Too much glue is not a good thing. A lot of glue actually will reduce the bonding uh, adhesion uh, because there's too much glue in the way and it's actually using the glue instead of bonding material to material. So this makes a big difference to speed up your fletching time as well as uh, cleanliness as well because after you're done you pop this off the vein should stick to your arrow and then all of this little bit of glue remnants here pretty much just flakes off. And if it doesn't flake off, you can use some acetone and wipe it up, which I do from time to time. But you'll see, well, there's a lot of dust on the table now, but that all the, uh, the vein glue pops right off. So I really do like that as well as a feature. Um, again, some things that I would change, I would shorten this. I think they may have uh, shortened that to get more clearance. Another thing too, is you're limited to a very short vein. You can't fletch like four inch veins on this because the clamp's not long enough. They'd have to extend the jig, use a different clamp. Um, I really wish they would have two options, the short option and a long option. And the long option would be really good 
for feathers um, because the again shooting right and left wing helical you got to use the bits and burger and it's a little bit of a pain to get them to contact 100% unlike with this it's super easy no challenge it speeds things way way up and I really really like this jig so in my opinion I absolutely would buy this jig if I am going to be involved in archery for any length of time because I can fletch any kind of arrow with just about any kind of vein within a you know reasonable length and I can truly adjust every single tiny little detail of how much helical right or left or straight um, have 100% contact be able to index my knocks perfectly and center my arrows and so every single arrow is super super consistent from arrow to arrow your dozen arrows are going to group better uh, because of this and you know I would I would absolutely buy this